Hello, my internet friends. I'm Trey Ratcliffe. I am back here in my studio in New Zealand. And now that I have some time, I want to make a better tutorial for Plotograph. What's Plotograph? Well, it's a program. It's a new software, web-based program that allows you to take a single JPEG and then turn it into an animation. All right. Uh, totally new tech. Really, really fun. Uh, so I'm going to take you through it from the beginning all the way to the end. You know, how do you load up an image? How do you animate it? And then how do you share it? All right. Uh, first, let me show you a few sample images. All right. Here's actually the very first one that I shared. This is a photo from Burning Man. And remember, this was taken with a single JPEG and then animated. Um, a little bit later, I'm going to open this one up and show you how this animation was done, how I drew the lines. You might notice how the, the smoke is kind of curling up around the sides and doing all this really cool stuff. It's, it's incredibly fun and quite easy, in fact. Here's a more subtle photograph, okay? Uh, here you can kind of see how the clouds are very subtly moving in the background. And I think one reason this appeals to me artistically is because I think this is actually how memory works. Like your memory doesn't store JPEGs like your iPhone stores JPEGs. It remembers moments. So there's something in between here that I find very appealing. Here's another example. This is in Golfos in Iceland. And as you can tell, this works particularly well with any kind of organic process, you know, water or rain or wind or fog or clouds, even grasses moving around, hair, all kinds of stuff, clothes moving in the wind. So you can see there's different kinds of vectors happening here. So for, for example, the water's going straight down, it's slowly flowing in the river, and then also over on the left side, you can see the mist is curling back up around and going back inside. Here's kind of a crazy one, but I still like it. Sometimes I like to go a little cray cray, you know. So of course, it started out as an HDR photo that I created with Aurora HDR, and then I came in here and animated it. Again, you can kind of see everything swirling up and to the left, and there's much slower movement in the water here. Here's one from Dubai. Um, in this one, the clouds are kind of moving, you know, left to right. And then also there's a subtle little touch. You can slowly see the traffic moving in the lower right, which I think is kind of cool. All right, here's one from Paris. Um, I like this one because, you know, it gives me a chance to go back and revisit some of my favorite photos and, and animate them. It's really fun. This is actually not a photo, but it's a painting, a digital painting that I did that I brought in and animated. Here's another more subtle one. This is Mount Erebus. It's a volcano in Antarctica. And so I kind of have the clouds slowly moving across. I have the shadows slowly moving across. And again, it's one of those things you don't really notice until you look at it a little bit more closely. Here's another Burning Man shot. Um, you can choose where you want the animation to be and where you don't. Like you see, I have a little subtle animation, the wind blowing her dress. Here's one for Hobbiton. Again, I made this one a little bit more dramatic. I made the clouds move a little bit faster. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Here's an experimental one that I'm playing with, and I kind of call this the Harry Potter effect. Um, you can see some movement in her hair. Uh, some of the paint strokes are moving around. It makes it seem strangely alive and kind of cool. Here's the last example I'll show you just sort of as a lookbook to give you ideas of what you might want to do with your own old photos. Uh, but after you do about 10 of these, you get pretty fast. And I can literally turn these things out in four or five minutes. It's super fun. Okay, let's make one. All right, so after you buy and log into the web service on Photograph Pro, it works on any computer. You just need web access. Um, and by the way, it's not a free product. All right, they're kind of pricing it at a professional level. Uh, right now, it's $300 a year. And they're kind of pricing this towards people that have clients. You know, maybe you're a wedding photographer, or maybe you do professional landscape work, or you're doing product things or portrait things, and you want to add a little special oomph to it. You know, some of your clients might like. Um, that's really who they're positioning it towards. And actually, I've read online that a lot of people are quite angry that it costs $300 a year, which I understand, I understand. But if you put it in perspective, maybe you think about it a different way, not like they're out to get you. It's more like, you know, when Photoshop first came out, it was 1000 bucks, and actually stayed like 999 all the way through 2012. And yeah, you wouldn't buy it every year, but you would buy it every two or three years. And maybe you'd only use it for a few purposes. So, you know, this is, I guess, in comparison, cheaper than that. Um, I know we kind of live in a world like you know, this Netflix world where everything is $19.99 or an app is 2 bucks, but this is a little bit different. They are positioning it towards professionals, and you know Troy and the team, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars making this thing. I don't know how much they spent. I actually don't know Troy that well, but I know it's like a very expensive product, and 
Anyway, like let's not talk about the money. Let's just create art, okay? All right, let's just pat that. Don't get so angry. Don't get past that. Let's just make some beautiful stuff, all right? Come on. So I'm gonna click new project right here. And I'm gonna go choose a file, okay? So I can choose any old JPEG that I want. And one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of times I will go ahead and downsize my JPEG to maybe 2000 pixels across, all right? A, it makes it faster, and you're not gonna be outputting an animation file that's 7,000 pixels across anyway, all right? You can, of course, but in most cases I don't. I just keep it about 1920 across. So I'll click Choose File, and one of the first things I did is I went through my whole portfolio and I picked like 50 images that seemed to have organic things going on to, to put them into Plotograph to play with. This is one from Mount Cook here in New Zealand on the South Island, all right? So I'll call this a uh, Mount Cook experiment. Create. Now remember, by the time you're in here, the interface may change quite a bit, but the basics should remain the same. All right, so here's the picture. Let me tell you the basic idea of what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna define an area that does not move, and then we're gonna define an area that does move, and then we will describe how it moves. All right, this is a very simple example in this case. I'll show you a slightly more complex one next. All right. So we're gonna go down here to this little lightning bolt, okay? And we're gonna add a mask, okay? The masked area is the part that you wanna stay still. So I'm gonna draw this weird looking red line like that, you know, something like my three-year-old would draw, okay? And then it kind of grabs that. Let me grab a little bit of the, the white mountain tops too, the snow-capped mountain type tops. <laughs> okay, then I'll click this and I'll say subtract mask. This is the part I want to move, the sky. And I'll make sort of this little green rainbow, just kind of loosely grabbing that area, okay? Now you can see what it's done here is it has kind of auto-selected a mask for me, but it hasn't been quite right, okay? So I'm gonna go add mask, I'm gonna do a little bit more. I'm gonna do a little red right there, whoop! Good, kind of fill in that area. Let's get that side right there, awesome. Um, I think this is the tallest mountain in um, the Southern Alps um, on the South Island of New Zealand. I'm not totally sure, but I think that's true. All right, so now I've done a pretty good job, all right? It could have been better, but I'm gonna zoom in and use my brush just to do the finer points on the mountaintops, all right? So right here, I'll click brush, boom. I'll pick my brush tool. I've got my giant brush. Currently, the slider's a little janky, so you can't quite get the right size, but that's all right. You can also, just like in Photoshop, use the right and left bracket keys, if you like. So I'm gonna click the zoom in here. I'm gonna zoom in, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, I'm gonna be a little bit rough here. You don't have to be super exact, right? Um, because the animated part is not gonna be touching this anyway, all right? Um, and then I'm gonna do a little feathering to give a little bit more room just to make sure, because you don't want like chunks of the mountain like flying off, like some sort of apocalyptic movie, right? So I'm gonna do a little painting here. Uh, you can either think of this as annoying or as therapeutic. I like to think about it as therapeutic, right? Just reducing the entropy in life. Just adding a little order to the chaos. A little whoop, whoop, whoop. All right, that's all right. You do not have to use stupid sound effects at all. That's not a requirement. Not a requirement. Okay, there we go. Looking good, looking good. Now let me zoom back out. Um, whoop. And I am going to click on this thing called feather. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, it's, it's going to extend the range of my mask a little bit just to make sure I get over the tops of those mountains. Now this is a weird interface, I'll be honest. I don't. I think they must have been on LSD when they came up with this feathering interface. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this feather thing and just slide it up, okay? And that'll make sure that the tops of the mountains aren't in there. Do you see how everything just went to white below? Because it was pulling down some of the blackness, all right? It's, again, it's very confusing. You just don't wanna see any chunkiness up there, okay? <laughs> right, anyway, once you're done with that, you click the little X and then you're done, okay? So see all these ugly lines we got all over the place? You know, it's like a kid did it. Let's get rid of some of those lines. We'll cut the layers here. Um, we'll remove the lines. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to do the animation part. All right, let's do that part. Um, so we're gonna click on this thing, all right? It's called animation points. So we're just gonna add a few points, okay? Boop, boop. I'll tell you a little secret too here. I'm adding five points, six, seven, eight, nine. 
Here's the hot key. Add a few points on the outside as well. Even though that seems ridiculous, I'll show you why it kind of works, okay? Now what we want to do, I can click on the arrow and I can click on these points and drag them in a position, okay? Now if I just do a little bit, the cloud will just move a little bit. If I move it a lot, the cloud will move a lot, okay? But what I can also do is I can go ahead and draw a box around all of them. Like I'm, I select all of them, then I can click and drag them all in the same direction. Again, you already get the sense that this is a fairly uh, simple um, version because all the clouds are going in the same direction. There's not a lot of complexity, all right? Now to see a preview, you just go down here and click play. Um, it takes a little while to load. Um, you might have to wait 10 seconds, 15 seconds. All right, and there we go. Um, at this point, you look around to see where there, there's problems, and there's often little problems, little things you didn't catch. One problem I see in particular, I see two, but I'll, we'll just fix one right now, is if you look at the top of Mount Cook here, you kind of see this little tornado thing flying off of it, okay? So here's a little hot tip on how to fix that. We're going to click our animation points, and we're going to zoom back in, okay, to the top of Mount Cook, okay? And we're going to take some animation points, and we're just going to drop them right here on the tip, because we don't want the tip to move. Now, if you remember before, we would use these and drag them out so it would actually be part of the animation. Well, in this case, if you just drop a point but don't drag anything out, it becomes an anchor. All right, it becomes an anchor and it won't move at all. All right, so let's press play now and see what happens. And there we go. That looks much better around there, doesn't it? Very cool. So just remember that you can drop little anchor points around things you don't want to move. Right? Like, for example, if there was a moon in the sky and you wanted the clouds to move, not the moon, you might drop little anchor points around the moon, just like that. Now I'll show you how to export this thing. All right. So you click on this thing. It looks like a Nintendo game controller. And you click Save. Okay. And then you go to Export As. All right? You have many options in here. Uh, one of the most common is a GIF file. Okay. That's how I often like to share them on the web. So you click a GIF, GIF, oh, I always said it the wrong way. People give you a hard time for saying the things in the wrong way, don't they? I ignore them. It's okay. I'm my own man. So for web res, I might do it 750 pixels across. All right. Then I just click export. Okay. Now it's being exported on the back end. I'm going to do another export. All right. Why? I'll explain in a moment. So I'll go to another export. In this case, I'm going to make it an MP4. Okay, I'll keep it about the same size uh, web res, and I'm doing the animation loop count of 20. All right, what does that mean? Well, the basic export is about two seconds, about two and a half or three seconds. So when you multiply it by 20, it becomes about a minute long, and that's the version that I'm going to put on Instagram. You see? You see? So you click export like this. Okay. Um, so what I can do is I can go to my exports right here. And this shows all of my exports, right? That one that I just did is still processing because it's a little bit bigger. It might take two or three minutes. Uh, but here's the GIF file. Um, and I could just download it right now and share away. If you're gonna share it on Facebook, again, I know that a lot of information coming at you. A lot of information. But I know people wanna know this. So you go here to Giphy, okay, giphy.com. And then you just upload your GIF and then you end up with a, uh, a file that you can then share, right? So if I click on this one, um, you, want, you want to go to the Advanced tab. And inside the Advanced tab, you will get um, uh, the proper URL for sharing. So you click here on Advanced. And you have this, the Giphy link. And if you just paste that into Facebook, you're good to go. All right. So it also works. You can upload. Oh, you can upload the GIF directly to Twitter. That works. And then with that Instagram file, which should be finished by now. Yeah, it just finished. Um, your only key is to get that onto your device, right? Get it onto your Android, get it onto your, your iPhone or your iPad. I use AirDrop to get it over. And then just upload it directly to Instagram and you're good to go. All right. So let's look at one more slightly complex example very quickly. All right, here's all my projects. You can see I'm obsessed. <laughs> uh, where is it? Temple Burn. Boom. Okay. So immediately you can see this has a lot more vectors and things happening, right? Let me just zoom in and show you a few of these things. All right, so we're going to click plus, zoom in a little bit. So you can see here how this 
smoke was curling up. If you rewind and watch it again, you'll see what I mean, how the smoke curls up. Basically what you wanna do is take and follow some of these vectors. And you see I have things kind of all over the place, kind of following the shapes, following the fire. Cause you know, fire is kind of an erratic thing, right? You can see how I've maxed her out. Um, I've also dropped a few points up here, right? A few anchor points, cause it was kind of pulling part of her hand up there with her. Um, I kind of have the smoke going in different directions, kind of all over the place, right? And the final result comes out looking pretty good. I just press play here so you can see. There you go, tremendously fun. And remember this preview is only playing at six frames per second. When you export it, you can do 25, 30, or 60 frames per second. Let me show you one last hot tip. There's more I can show you. Like I said, I'll make more advanced tutorials later. We have all kinds of tutorials, by the way, you know, not just for this, but Lightroom, Photoshop, and all kinds of jazz. Aurora HDR, great program. Uh, if you click this thing right here, this is animation properties, okay? Um, I can increase the duration of it, and that will make the flames go much slower and much smoother. I wanted this to go a little fast because I wanted it to be more fire-like. So that's kind of a powerful thing. Foreground edge blur too, this will also help you if you have got hard edges on your mask and you want it to be like a little bit softer, a little bit of a, a Gaussian mix in between there, all right? And here's one last thing, I keep saying one last thing. There's so much to show you. It's a powerful program, powerful program. I'm gonna turn on tracks in preview, okay? So let me click here, I'm gonna turn on my mask, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, not my mask, my mesh, all right? So these are all the triangles. Um, this is gonna show exactly how this stuff is moving around. All right, now you see why we have these anchor points on the outside, because they kind of guide these particle animations up and off and around the edge of the screen. It just kind of keeps it moving kind of smoothly, all right? I know it looks complex. Uh, you know, nothing like this has ever really been made before. Uh, the way it's moving these particles and animating them and accelerating them in the vectors, it's a lot of new concepts coming at you, but you'll pick it up in almost no time. Like I said, I promise, um, after making about 10 of these things, you'll get the hang of it. Um, a simple one you can do in three or four minutes. A more complex one like this, it might take you 10 or 15 minutes, but you know, it's tremendously fun, good creative work. Um, if you watch it this far, you must be kind of interested. I have, I have an appointment I gotta go to, I just got my ding. Um, so anyway, you guys stay awesome. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.